You know, a lot of guys talk about this experience of coming down here, being in enemy territory. I'm curious, what was it like actually being in there and, and doing the thing? I fucking loved it. I loved every second of it. When I was walking out, there was a bunch of people, like, you know, going, like, blatantly crazy, like, ah, screaming at me as I was walking out. And I was fuck you. I loved it. I would do it again in a heartbeat. Anyway. I believe I saw you saying something on the ceremonial face of uh, Wayans as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just single out the meanest looking guy in the crowd and, like, focus on him and then just, like, take it out on everybody. We say you I, I think you have to. I've, it's either that or, like, those people kind of make you shy. You know what I mean? It's like you, you, you almost submit to the crowd. You know, that was always kind of that way in, like, High school football, high school wrestling, college wrestling. It's like if the student section starts to fuck with you, you're fucked. You know what I mean? Like, you got to give it back to them. Like, let them know, like, I don't give a shit about you. And just smear it in their noses. And that's kind of how I approached, you know, everything in Brazil. But to be honest, the Brazilian people as a whole and Rio, beautiful. I, I love this place. I love it. It's absolutely, it's a beautiful, beautiful place. Would you like to come back here to compete? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I could live here. There's the beach right there. Everyone's so relaxed. It just, it just felt good. I mean, everyone talked about how dangerous it is down here, but it's like anywhere. You know what I mean? Like, I lived in Detroit. We talk about dangerous. You know what I mean? Like, you just don't do stupid shit. You just, you know, be respectful to people, and, and people will be respectful to you. And if you do get in a situation like that, well, I'm a bad motherfucker. Like, let's go, you know? In terms of the fight itself, did it play out how you thought? Was there any surprises? Gives you a lowdown on the, on the fight. Uh, I, mean, I mean, honestly, I really honestly thought that I'd be out of there in a round. I really did. I thought I would get Luan out of there. Um, he kept his defense pretty tight. I really I was having a hard time landing the, the, the big, big shots on him. Um, and when I did hit him with something I thought would phase him, some of a bitch just walked me back down and started fucking chucking body kicks and body shots at me. You know what I mean? It was just like a war of attrition. It's been a long time since I've gotten in a fight like that where it's just like, all right, motherfucker, let's just find out who wants it more. You know what I mean? Like, that's how I felt. After that first round, I sat down on the, I sat down on the stool. I'm like, well, how bad do I want to win this fight? Because this kid's not going away. You know what I mean? He's not. He's not going to give up. I can see what he's fighting for. You know what I mean? Like, he's, this is his opportunity. This is his dream. Like, that was the fight. It's his life. You know what I mean? He threw everything with everything he had. And, uh, I mean, fucking warrior. Absolute warrior. Nothing but respect for Luann. And I actually just said it in an interview before. Like, I actually felt terrible. You know what I mean? Coming to fucking... Rio de Janeiro, his hometown, you know what I mean? His USC debut, his, his time to shine, you know what I mean? Like his moment, you know, he's like Jose Aldo's, uh, you know, like best training partner, best friend, fucking, you know what I mean? Like he's seen this and dreamed of this his whole life and I just came down here and just shit on it. And like, yeah, like obviously the competitor in me doesn't give a shit, but the human in me is like, damn. You mentioned that you thought you were gonna get him in a round is there a moment where you have to sort of th think to yourself like, wow, okay, you make that adjustment because otherwise if you're so convinced you can get him out there in a round, right, do you, yeah. is mentally challenging almost for you at that point? Yeah, I mean, there was a moment in the fight, I think it was in the second round where we kind of just like, I could tell, you know what I mean, I, I hit him with a really good body shot and then a hard leg kick and kind of looked at him like, that's I got you, motherfucker. And he just like bit down on his mouth guard and just started chucking at me. And then we just kind of got in this like, this war where we're just throwing three pieces at each other and rolling and, and like we're just really just getting there fighting and I'm like well this is when it's going to happen like I'm going to catch him in, in these exchanges and then I did crack him once and then he he stopped it right away and started fighting a different way but yeah I mean tough kid tough kid but shit I'm ready for everybody you know what I mean like anyone I mean I fought more guys in the fucking top 10 than half the guys in the top 10 you know what I'm saying like I fought El Jermaine Sterling in my third fucking third or fourth UFC fight you know what I mean? I was in the top 10 in fucking six months. You know what I mean? Like, I think people forget how much experience I have in this division. Like, how many bad motherfuckers I've fought in the cage. You know what I mean? Like, and there's a lot of those fights where it's like, I just wasn't competitively ready for that competition. You know what I mean? Like, my third fight in the UFC, I'm fighting in the top 10. You know what I mean? In a fucked up division at 135. You know what I mean? So, I, like, I haven't really had an opportunity to grow. And I... I know that I'm a top 10 guy. I know that I can be a UFC champion. I know that I can do all these things. I just have to string shit together. You know what I mean? I, I let my ego run the train and, or drive the train last time. And this time I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be smart and, and do shit the right way and take the right fights and, and be a little more sh strategic and not just a, you know, a dumb fucking brute fighter that just wants to fight everybody. Yeah, you say strategic, but you, you're sort of also saying it's also time to start putting you back up there and let's, let's get that train rolling in yeah. that direction. Yeah, I mean, I was gonna, I was gonna call out Pedro Munoz uh, after the fight, um, 
but I also heard right before the fight that he already has uh, another opponent, Chris Gutierrez, which is a great fight. So I don't, yeah, I don't know, I don't know who it's going to be, but you know, I'd, I'd like to start start putting my name in the hat for some real shit. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't necessarily, it, it could be an exciting fight, it can be a veteran, but I want to fight legit motherfuckers. I want to fight people that are well known to be the best dudes in the world. I've always wanted that, you know. And and I think tonight I I prove that I'm I'm capable of fighting anybody. Congrats, man. Like you said at the beginning, you were fighting these guys like your third fight. You're fighting in the top ten, and you said that you maybe felt like your growth. Do you think? Do you wish you would have maybe slow played it a little bit more so you could have grown in the sport a little bit more? Yeah, you got to understand that when I got in the UFC, I was like training out of my garage. You know what I mean? Like we had just opened up a gym, a Michigan Top Team. Like we were babies. We had no fucking idea what we were doing. You know what I mean? Like I, Darren, and, Darren Crookshank and I used to get ready for his UFC fights. Like he's fighting Jorge Masvidal. We're in a fucking, we're in a garage with a wood heater in the middle of winter training. He's going to fight Jorge Masvidal. You know what I mean? Like the way I came up is like the, you know, people in the jungle in Brazil, like we, we had no idea what the hell we were doing. You know what I mean? And it took a long time. You know what I mean? Like you're, you're going against these people that are training in legit gyms with legit coaches. They know the routine. They know all the things. And we're just hillbillies in our backyard, you know, trying to figure it out. I mean, we had great coaches, thank God, but, but we really didn't, we didn't have the instruction. I, we didn't know the, we didn't know the game the way I know it now. You know what I mean? Moving to Las Vegas. I mean, I've sacrificed my whole life for this shit, you know, and I, I'm, I'm owed. I'm owed everything, and I, this is how I feel. Do you think, even though, you know, like you said, you wanted to, wish you could have slow played it, but some of those losses and some of those fights, you learned a lot about yourself, I imagine, as oh. well. Do you think that's what has enabled you? Because right now, watching you out there fight tonight, it looked like a brand new you. It looked yeah. like you were fighting different than I've seen you fight in years, it felt. Yeah, I mean, I think the, what the biggest thing for me is, like, the, re the regret, you know? Like, one fight that stands out more than any is Marab. I know I can beat that motherfucker. You know what I mean? Like I was, I, I was, I was hot. Everything was perfect. I was gonna whoop him, and I went out there and I was just flat. And I fought emotionally. I got taken down and I got pissed. And then I fought, you know, like just pissed off the whole fight, just trying to land bombs on the kid. Just I fought exactly the way I knew I wasn't supposed to fight. And like when I got done with that fight, I was like, I just pissed away such a huge opportunity. You know what I mean? Like I could be sitting where he's sitting right now. And I knew that. I knew that then. And like that was kind of. That was like a propeller for me. That fight really messed me up. I mean, getting choked out by Saeed sucked, you know what I mean? But it was like, it was a fluke. Everyone's like, it's, it's going to happen, you know what I mean? And it did. And, you know, but, but that, one, that one really ate me alive. And I'm like, I'm never going to walk out of that cage with that regret. Like, I don't care what I got to do. If I got to fucking die in there, I don't care, you know? But I'm not going to walk out of there being like, I had more to give. Out of all the ones, is that the, is that the loss, like you said, that weighs on you the most? Is that the one you want most back? Oh, oh absolutely. Absolutely. You can have all the other ones. I want him back, though. I know. I just know I can beat him. And you said you mentioned tonight. You know, you thought it was like a fight of a, a war of attrition. Do you like those kind of fights where you get a guy that's willing to give you that that fight of style? And Fuck just... no, hell no, uh, no. Uh, I want him. I want to hit him, and I want him to fall down, and then I want to you know walk away with a bunch of money. Like, I mean, being in it in that second round, I was kind of getting into it. Like, that's right, motherfucker, let's go. And at the end of the fight, I was telling him, I was like, swing it out. I was like, put your feet on the ground, swing it out. Like, let's swing it out right here and figure it out. He obviously couldn't understand me because he kept yeah. kicking. <laughs> I was like, as it was happening, I'm thinking like, oh, he's still kicking. He doesn't, he doesn't know what I'm saying. Um, but no, I don't, you know, I don't ever want to be one of those guys that's like, man, that guy's got a fucking great chin. You know what I mean? Like, that's not who I want to be in this sport. I want to be somebody that hits and doesn't get hit. That's the fucking game. You know what I mean? It's not about how much damage you can take in a fight. Like, I don't... I don't want to be. I don't want to be one of those guys that that's known for being tough. Never. And then last, me looking for the rest of the year. You know, what's sort of the goals for the rest of the year that you're setting for yourself? Two more wins. I win two more fights. I mean, obviously, I would like it to be against you know guys that matter. You know, but ultimately, every motherfucker in the UFC is really good. So, you know, I'll fight anybody. And you know, there's some other there's some other things that I've been thinking about. These weight cuts are not getting any easier on me. You know what I mean? I've really kind of considered maybe not doing it anymore, not, not cutting to 35 anymore. It's just something I got to talk to my team about and, and, and figure out what I'm going to do. But, yeah, I had a moment Thursday night where I was like, 
I don't think I'm fucking doing this again. Just, you know, like, I'm a big dude at 135, and I keep getting fucking bigger, and I cannot figure out why. It doesn't matter what kind of fucking diet I go on. I just keep getting thicker, and it just it's getting harder. So I don't know if I'm going to keep making 35 or if it's time to, to, to move up. Did you hit a hard spot where you, the weight just couldn't get No, up? honestly, that's the, the worst thing about it was is the weight came off great, and the whole weight cut was perfect. But it's just like once I'm at that weight, when I'm at 136 pounds, I feel fucking awful. I mean, like, I can barely move. You know what I mean? I'm dry heaving. I'm, I just, I'm uncomfortable. It's just, it's just a painful experience. You know what I mean? Like that weight cut is so fucking hard. I mean, it's like literally like after I cut weight, I'm like, I'm begging to fight. You know, it's like, it's the fight. is fucking easy. Like, I don't care if Luann fucking throws a hundred, you know, body kicks at me. I could give a shit less. Like at least I get to, you know, eat, you know, like that weight cuts hard fighting seems pretty easy. And I think that this would be a lot more fun as a sport if I could actually enjoy my life a little bit, not have to fucking diet for three months every time I got to make weight. So next fight might be a different division, huh? Yeah, we'll see. Congrats on the victory. Thank you. You've mentioned uh, Thursday being a, like, a hard day for you. Can you allow, and, uh, explain, elaborate what exactly went for you uh, on Thursday? What happened? How did you feel? Did, was there any part of you that considered like, not fighting? It was just more of a mental thing, really. I mean, so I have an issue with airplanes. On airplanes on a long flight, I blow up. I don't know why. Uh, I, I, I'll be honest, I landed in, in Rio at 158 pounds. So I had to lose uh, 22 pounds. And I landed Sunday morning, so about, about five days. It's a lot of weight, you know. So by Thursday, I was not feeling fucking great. And it's just, it was just the, the thought about, like, I talked, uh, I talked to Gilbert Burns, actually, because, like, I was, like, I had just got done cutting weight, and we were hanging out at the rooftop pool, and he was like, man, I used to do this shit, dude, and I'm telling you, once you stop doing it, it's like this, this, the whole fucking game is so much better. He's like, you'll actually enjoy this. You'll enjoy the sport. You'll enjoy it so much more. And I just thought about how much less miserable and how much better this sport would be if I didn't have to fucking put my body through that hell every single time I had to make weight. And he was like, I'm telling you, man. He's like, it's, just, it's not worth it. He's like, I thought if I went to 170, I would never be able to compete. And he's like, but I'm um, doing better than I ever did. So and he's like, and I'm not a big guy. And so I was like, so if, if I go up to 45, it's 100% Gilbert Burns' fault. So going up to 45 and being healthier or fighting at 35 and getting a, sh uh, a fight against Mirab again? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll cut to 36 and fight Mirab again. <laughs> I just... I don't I gotta cut off one of my fucking legs or something, man. My legs just keep getting bigger. I, I, everyone's like, man, you got huge legs. I'm like, dude, that's not a good thing. Like, it sucks when I gotta get on the scale. You know, I, I really, I just need to shrink a little bit and it wouldn't be so bad, but it's just not happening. 